KD all day. Our final rate problem is an opposing rate problem. I like to think of these as moving walkway questions. So you are probably familiar with the moving walkways at the airport. They are like horizontal escalators that can help you walk down long hallways. And so if you have a person and he is moving with the moving walkway, so perhaps the person he is walking, so he's walking at a rate of, we'll say, three meters per second, but then the walkway under him is also moving at a rate of two meters per second. And so in this case, after one second, the person has walked three meters, but the walkway has also pushed him an additional two meters. And so it is really like he is moving at a rate of five meters per second with the walkway. Now, you are probably also familiar with the scenario where at the airport, there are a bunch of punk kids who are not being watched by their parents. And so the walkway is still moving from left to right at two meters per second. And the kids think it would be fun to run across the walkway in the opposite direction. And so now they are going from right to left at a rate of three meters per second, getting in the way of everybody trying to go to their terminal. So now in this case, uh, after one second, the kid has moved three meters to the left, but the walkway has pushed him back two meters. And so it is really like he is moving uh, forward at a rate of one meter per second against the walkway. And so this here is really the opposing rate situation. But if they were to give you a moving walkway type scenario, they can present them both a, it can be an additive or a opposing rate situation. And so let's look at a GMAT problem that does that. Two islands, island A and island B, are 900 meters apart. Nemo swims in a straight line from island A to island B and back. At a constant rate, it takes him seven and a half minutes to travel from island A to island B, assisted by a downstream current. It then takes him 12 and a half minutes to travel from island B to island A against the current, also at a constant rate. Which of the following most closely approximates, so that is always a key word, how long it would take Nemo to travel from island A to island B in still waters. So still waters means with no current. That would be like walking without the assistance of the moving walkway. So here, we have two parts to our trip. So when he's going from island A to B, Nemo is going with the current. And so if we say this is Nemo, this here is the current, and then he returns from island B, the current is still going from left to right, but now Nemo is going in the opposite direction. So for the second part of the trip, he is going against the current. And then what else do we know? What can we fill in? So our distance for each of the two legs is 900 meters. And the total distance of our trip is 1,800 meters. And then we know the times for each leg of the trip. And so I like, I prefer writing them as fractions. So seven and a half is 15 over two. And so it looks like our unit here is meters per minute, which you wanna take note of. Uh, sometimes you might have to convert between meters per minute or meters per second and kilometers per hour. And then for the second part of the trip, it took him 12 and a half minutes, which is 25 over 2. And that makes sense because when he is going against the current, it should take him longer, assuming that he's moving at the same individual rate, which they say he is. That is what they mean by constant rate. And so we want to know how long would it take Nemo without any sort of assistant, assistance from the current to go the 900 meters. And so we, it looks like we've pretty much have this entire thing filled out. We can figure out our rates from the distance and the time that we filled in. So the question is, but what rate is this? And what rate are we looking for? So this here is Nemo with the current, right? So this is Nemo's individual rate plus the current's rate. Now here, this is Nemo, this is still the current. Now this rate here is when he's opposing the current, so this rate would be Nemo's rate minus the current's rate. And so if we need Nemo, uh, Nemo's time by himself, we need Nemo's rate by itself. And so you have to separate out our rates here into their individual components so we can isolate just n. And so what I want to do is I want to solve for Nemo's individual rate, then use his individual rate to find his individual time. And so now if I want to make equations out of what I have, I know this times this is equal to this. So 
n plus c times the rate times time 15 over 2 is equal to 900 meters and then n minus c times 25 over 2 is also equal to 900 so if i want to get n and c by themselves so here i will multiply each side by 2 over 15 And so we get n plus c is equal to what? So 900 times 2 over 15. How should I do that? So I can break up 15 into 3 times 5. So then I get a 300 here. 300 over 5 is 60. So this is just 120. And so this is Nemo with the current. This is the rate of Nemo with the current. So our unit here should be meters per minute. So n plus c is equal to 120 meters per minute. Then here, n minus c should be equal to, I want to multiply each side by 2 over 25 to cancel out this fraction. So 900 times 2 over 25. And what does that give me? So 25 goes into 100 four times. Therefore, it should go into 939 times 4 or 36 times. So this would be 72 meters per minute. And again, that makes sense. When he's going with the current, he's going significantly faster than against the current. He is almost half as fast against the current. So now what did we say our goal was? We want to solve for n. And whenever I'm solving systems of equations, I like writing them out like this. I like writing them vertically with my variables lined up because people always like to when they have systems of equations. People are always trying to substitute and i very rarely am doing substitution i'm always trying to combine my two equations to solve for what i am looking for i think it is easier and less prone to math mistakes and in this case i am trying to solve for n meaning i want my my c to cancel out and my equations are lined up very nicely so that if i just add them the c should go away so if i add the two equations 2n is equal to 192 meters per minute So Nemo's rate is just 192 over 2 meters per minute. What is that? 90, 96. So Nemo can swim at a rate of 96 meters per minute. You can tell me if that is a, makes me fast or a slow swimmer. No, so, I'm not done yet because I have to find the time, right? The time for Nemo to go the 900 meters. And so now it is just a final rate times time equals distance. But here we are used to the distance is 900 meters at its individual rate, 96 meters per minute. And then it said approximately, right? So that is a hint that I might not get a round number here. So time is 900 over 96. If I want to simplify that now, uh, the digits of 96, they sum to 15, which is a multiple of three. So 96 should be divisible by 3. So if I divide each of these guys by 3, 900 is. 900 divided by 3 is 300. 96 over 3 is 32, I think. And then I can simplify this a bit more. So divide each, the 150 over 16. Then divide by 2 again, 75 over 8. So, 75 over 8 meters per minute. So if I put that as a, and I'm sorry, this is just the time. So it's 75 over 8 minutes. Again, another reason to keep track of your units as you go. So if it takes them 75 over 8 minutes, I probably just need to convert that to a decimal. Or an approximate decimal. So 75 over 8 minutes. Uh, 75 over 8. So uh, 8 goes into 75 9 times with 3 left over. So 9 and 3 eighths minutes. And so given that answer choice E is the only answer choice over 9 minutes, 3 eighths of a minute would be approximately 20 seconds. That sounds right. But E has to be the answer choice.